Hello and welcome! DeepFreeze32 here, and we're going to start playing one of my favorite games of all time, System Shock 2. I just completed System Shock 1, so if you want to check that out, there will be a link in the description and or an annotation. But for now, I'm going to be playing on normal. Um, I have played on hard a bit before, but... I'm more interested in completing the game rather than having a challenge, so let's get to it. Look at you, hacker. A p -p pathetic creature of meat and bone, panting and sweating as you run through my corridors. How can you challenge a perfect, immortal machine? In 2072, a rogue artificial intelligence known as Shodan lost her mind. In her limitless imagination, Shodan saw herself as a goddess destined to inherit the earth. That image was snuffed out by the hacker who created her. February 3rd is the day the magic happens. The Von Braun, the first starship in history capable of traveling at faster than light speed, will undertake her maiden voyage. This incredible journey is the result of teamwork between the UNN Protectorate and the incredible scientific minds of the newly relicensed Trioptimum Corporation. Imagine being able to travel to distant star systems in a period of weeks. It's all part of Triop's commitment to the future. The Von Braun is packed with over 1.8 billion flight, scientific, and security systems, nearly all developed by Trioptimum and its wholly owned subsidiaries. Providing security for the Von Braun as she plows through the heavens will be the UNN Rickenbacker. At her helm will be no less than Captain William Bedford Diego himself, hero of the Battle of Boston Harbor during the Eastern States Police Action. This incredible union of government and corporation is made possible by an intricate series of docking mechanisms that will allow the Rickenbacker to piggyback its way into jump space. Sleek. Fast. Revolutionary. Who knows what wonders await our crews in the bosom of the cosmos. All we do know is that it's a great day for mankind. We are in game now. Welcome to the Ramsey Center UNN recruitment facility. Please watch your step when leaving the train. The graph shafts at the end of the hall will take you to the street level training and recruitment center. Please proceed to the graph shafts. <laughs> Mind the gap. What gap? So first thing you'll notice is uh, I'm running with some mods that are not standard. Uh, there's some high-definition texture packs. I think there's some higher poly models involved. Um, yeah, in general, just mods to make the game, you know, feel a little less old. Now, this game came out in 1999, and it holds up really well. Into the grab shafts to proceed to the street level recruitment. I always thought this was really cool whenever I played this, oh, way back in the early 2000s. Before you choose your career, you'll want to learn some basic abilities. First, you should go into the basic training center. When you're done with basic training, proceed to the advanced training area. Right. To pick up some basic skills you'll need to get by in the service, Enter this Cyberlink booth. Inside, you'll learn the basic skills you'll need to get started. I really like how they handle tutorials in this game. 
by making it seem like, oh, you're recruiting for the military. Welcome, trainee. While you're in our virtual training courses, we provide you with a simulated cyber interface. This training interface is identical to an actual military-grade cyber interface. Now, let's try it out. Move the mouse. See how it changes where you look? That means you're in shoot mode. Hit the tab key. This puts you in use mode, where you can use your mouse to interact with items in the world. Open your primary MFD, or multifunction display, by clicking on the MFD button near the bottom of the screen. This display shows your strengths in various areas. When you're ready to continue, press the tab key to go back to shoot mode. Try changing between modes until you get the hang of it. Follow the red path along the ground to the next training station. I apparently have all of the psionic ability. Now this is kind of Gibsonian as well, at least I think so. Kind of reminds me of cyberspace in System Shock 1, as well as, I guess, that approach scene from Escape from New York. To pick up items, center them on your screen and right click. This will automatically place that item into your inventory. To view your inventory, press the tab key. You can move items around your inventory by left clicking and dragging them around. To drop an item, you drag it from your inventory into the 3D view and release the mouse button. items like buttons and computers, center them in your view, and click the right mouse button. All usable items will have brackets around them. Highlight the button on the pillar and right click. This will activate the lift. Try it out. If you can still see your inventory display, it means you're in use mode. Hit tab to return to shoot mode. So that was another thing I liked is, uh, well, I like now anyway. They changed the use key from left mouse button to right mouse button, which is a lot more in line with traditional shooting mechanics. The object before you is a med hypo. Pick it up and then press tab to go into use mode. Right clicking on the med hypo will use it and restore some needed hit points. Your hit points are displayed by a bar in the lower left corner of your screen. Many objects in your inventory can be used by right clicking on them. Okay, so it's kind of like the, uh, the med patches. See the crate in front of you? To search it, center it on your screen and right-click. If you are in use mode, simply move the pointer to the crate and right-click. To take an item from that container, simply left-click on it. This will automatically place that item in your inventory. To close the container window and return to shoot mode, press the tab key. One of the most important tools you have as a soldier is your PDA. This device stores audio logs, emails, and other useful information. Click on the disk icon near the bottom of your screen to bring up the PDA display. Currently, the contents of your PDA are empty. Now, pick up the audio log in front of you. This message is coming from the audio log you just picked up. You can use your PDA at any time to play any audio log or email you've received. In the field, the PDA is also used for keeping track of your current mission objectives and obtaining help information. Now it's time to learn about jumping and mantling. To jump, simply press the space bar. Some surfaces can be mantled onto by holding down the space bar. Mantling lets you pull yourself up to ledges and other high places in front of you. Give it a try. To climb a ladder, simply walk into it and look upward. You'll automatically start climbing the ladder. Yeah, they much improved ladders from System Shock 1. You've done well. Remember, if you're unclear on any aspect of what you've just learned, you can repeat the training as often as you wish. 
Let's do advanced training. If you've completed basic training, you're ready for the advanced lessons provided here. Advanced training will familiarize you with the three key areas of military service. Weapons training, technical training, and psionics training. Approach the Cyberlink booth of your choice to train in that area. All right, wannabe. If you want to learn the weapon skills it takes to even think about joining the Marines, come on in. We're looking for a few good men. But just a few. Good to have you on board. You'll notice when you're in the Cyberlink booth, the UNN has kindly provided you with a virtual cyber interface and all the simulated skill levels you'll need for the training tasks. But don't get too cocky. They'll disappear once you leave the booth. Now we'll teach you how to handle a firearm. Pick up the pistol and the cliff from the table. You can equip the weapon in one of two ways. Bring up your inventory and drag the pistol to your weapons equip slot near the right hand side of your inventory. If that's too slow for you, you can use the hotkeys on the keyboard. Press 2. If the pistol was in your inventory, it will equip for you automatically. To lock and load the ammo clip, hit the R key or hit the reload button on the lower right corner of your screen. Once you've loaded the firearm, take a shot at the dummy robot by pressing your left mouse button when in shoot mode. Notice how its health bar gets shorter as you chip away at it. Some items need to be charged with energy before they can be used. Pick up the laser pistol. Now use the recharging station nearby. The recharge station will juice up all of your energy-based items. Weapons, batteries, you name it. Weapons are not fine wines. They do not get better with age. The colored dot on the lower right corner of the screen tells you what kind of shape your firearm is in. Green is good, red is bad. To fight the effects of wear and tear, a soldier with maintenance skill can use a maintenance tool to improve the condition of his weapon. Just pick up the tool, open your inventory, and drag the tool onto your pistol. Remember that maintenance tools are only good for a single use. Good work. Now you're ready for the Marines. Take a look at the other training areas first before you enlist. They might just come in handy. Inside, we'll teach you the basics of some technical skills you'll need in the Navy. Welcome. You'll notice when you're in the Cyberlink booth, we'll provide you with a temporary cyber interface and the skills you need to accomplish the training tasks. But they'll only last so long as you're in the booth. The object in front of you is a container of nanites. Nanites are consumed whenever you perform technical tasks, such as hacking or repairing. When you pick up the container of nanites, they do not go in your general inventory, but are instead displayed in use mode on the bottom left of your screen. Walk over to the keypad by the door and try out hacking. Use the keypad by right-clicking on it. To the right of the number pad, you'll see an orange tab labeled Hack. Left-click on the tab. Text will appear indicating the difficulty of the hack and any bonuses that apply. Click on the Start button to begin hacking. You'll see a grid of nodes. Clicking on a node will either turn it bright or dark. To successfully hack, you must connect three bright nodes in a straight line. Beware the ice nodes with the red outlines. If one of these turns dark, you fail the hack, and you might break the item you're working on or worse. You can restart your hack attempt at any time by hitting the reset button, though you'll have to pay the nanite cost again. You can use nanites to buy items from replicators. To use a replicator, right-click on it. Hi then left-click on the Please item you wish to purchase. Selection. The item you purchased will drop into the slot below. Make sure you pick up your purchases Please before you leave. Choosing value wrap. Hi there. Please make your selection. Choosing value wrap. of the technical skills. There are several other technical skills you'll learn throughout the course of your career, such as repairing items and modifying weapons. 
The cyber interfaces for these tasks are similar to the hacking interface. Before you enlist in the Navy, try out the other training courses. They'll be useful. And now for the weirdest one, Psy. Inside, you will learn how to reach out with your mind. Do not let fear block your path. Uh, I'd come up with a witty Star Wars quote, but my brain's not up firing on all cylinders right now. We've provided you with a virtual interface and the temporary ability to project simulated psionic powers. Once you leave this area, these powers will be lost to you. The red bar at the lower left of your screen tells you how many psi points you have. Psi points symbolize the current ability to use your psi powers. Psi hypos replenish your psi points. Try using a psi hypo and watch your psi points increase. When you've reached your maximum in psi points, move to the next station. This psi amp amplifies your psi powers and lets you project them into the real world. To equip it, pick it up and then hit the tilde key. Firing the psi amp activates your currently selected psi discipline. You currently have access to two disciplines, cryokinesis and kinetic redirection. Go into use mode and click on the arrows on the bottom right of the screen. This will cycle through your available psi disciplines. Later, clicking on the arrows above the number to the left will allow you to select psi disciplines from higher tiers. Use cryokinesis to destroy the robot and kinetic redirection to pull that nanite container towards you. Be careful. Holding down the mouse button can augment the power. Holding it down for too long will cause burnout, which will damage you. If you run out of psi points, use another psi hypo. So, one thing that is uh, of importance, the mod I installed includes this new PsyAmp model. Mastery of the mind is a slow but rewarding process. Return to this area if you need more guidance. Before you enlist in the OSA, it would be useful to experiment in the other training courses. I like how they all assume you're going to enlist with them. Here's where you make your choice, soldier. Here's where you enlist in one of the three branches of the military. Once you decide on your branch of service, there's no going back. A shuttle will take you to a UNN orbital space station, where you'll receive a briefing regarding your yearly postings. Good luck. Yeah, so this is uh, the most interesting part of character creation. It's unlike System Shock 1, it's more like a role-playing game. This is your class selection. You've got straight up combat with guns you got kind of a tech oriented class and then you've got your psionic kind of spellcaster type thing i'm gonna go with navy because i like using technical skills And this is the other interesting part. You get to pick various like level up rewards by uh, selecting assignments as a military officer. Welcome aboard the space station Chesapeake Bay, sailor. It looks like you've picked up some standard weapon skills at basic on Coronado Island. Now it's time for your tour of duty. Your tour will consist of four postings over four years. In this man's navy, you're given a choice of three different postings a year. It's up to you to decide what kind of career you want to have, so choose wisely. Just approach a shuttle bay to receive a briefing on a posting. If you think that posting is right for you, head into that bay to accept the assignment. The 
UNN Lucille is looking for volunteers for their military police detachment. Those sailors can get pretty rowdy on these year-long cruises, so you better not be afraid of a tussle. The UNN Lucille is looking for an engineer's mate to help maintain the ship's core energy systems. There's some heavy lifting involved, sailor, but you'll learn your way around the high-tech equipment. The UNN Lucille is looking for an ops training officer to learn the ship's navigation and data control systems. You'll get your feet wet with the high-tech systems, but also expect some heavy lifting. I generally like hack skills, so I'm going to go with this one. Kind of flew there. Laverne, Florida hosts the Navy's premier tactical training school. While maybe not as respected as the Marines facility at Fort Bush, there's a lot to be learned here. The UNN Pierce is ferrying liberated political prisoners back home from their detention near Saturn. The Pierce has been assigned a detachment of Marines and needs sailors to load, administer, and maintain the arms on board the ship. The UNN Carfax is undertaking a mission to examine a newly discovered Class B comet approaching the outer solar system. You'll likely pick up some useful skills working with the high-tech navigation systems aboard this newly commissioned heavy cruiser. I don't remember what Cyber Affinity does. I think it makes it cheaper to buy skill points. Maybe. I think I'm going to go with weapons. Laverne, Florida hosts the Navy's premier tactical training school. Well, maybe not. The Navy strongly encourages every sailor to undertake some amount of zero-G training. A year at the Yamamoto Space Station in Earth's orbit will more than suffice. The Navy maintains a survival training school on the surface of Io, the third moon of Jupiter. Pros? There's no better way to improve stamina and survival skills. Cons? The 21.2% mortality rate. Seems a bit high, even for the military. The Navy's Marie Curie Research Facility on Aquinas IV is currently conducting research on a new strain of space-borne virus that killed 220,000 citizens of New Atlanta. To lift the quarantine, we must determine how the virus pierced the city's micro-nanite shielding. So I'm leaning for... research... or... probably... endurance. Research is very useful, and I think it's actually required to the progress Navy's the game. The Mary Curie Research Facility on Aquinas IV is currently conducting research. So I think this may actually be, be the last portion before you get assigned to the Rickenbacker. I've been going on a little while, so I'll probably end up cutting this episode here. So I'll see you next time.